Hello friends, today we are back for another video of my Capsule Beauty collection. Today we are going to be creating and curating my Capsule Beauty makeup collection. I have the beautiful makeup case that I had mentioned in my previous video. Um, it's this gorgeous, large, um, kind of nude pink leather case. Um, I picked this off of Etsy. It's no longer available. I got these for all of my bridesmaids and I got one for myself with my new to be monogram. Um, I've kind of been reserving this until my wedding day and honeymoon and stuff. But for the sake of this video, I feel like I need a large enough case to show you how I will create my capsule makeup collection and you can also go off of a large makeup case or a vanity set um, or a drawer or a cabinet, whatever um, system you prefer. So with that being said, the very first product that I need to add to my collection is my base. So the products that I apply pre-foundation or pre-concealer. Um, so there's two that I really enjoy. So first off is the OG. This is the Jojoba Glow Face Oil. I love prepping my skin with a facial oil, especially with the products that I use for foundation. I use cream-based, not liquid-based or powder-based products, and I find that they do a really good job at blending in and just melting into my skin when I have a very hydrated base like a facial oil applied. So this is my favorite pre-makeup face oil to use. So this is definitely going to be going into my capsule collection. The next one is obvious. It is a sunscreen. Now the recent sunscreen I have been using, I am going to disclaim it's not the cleanest sunscreen. It does have chemical sunscreen ingredients. Um, avobenzone, um, oxalate and octoc octocrylene or octocrylene. Um, I'm going to finish this and then try and find some type of alternative. If you know of a clean sunscreen that has a glow to it, please send them my way because this just is absolutely stunning and I wish it was just a mineral base. So I'm going to go on the hunt and continue using this in the meantime. Um, I like that it doesn't have the other chemical sunscreens that have been proven to be very harmful for the coral reefs, etc. Avobenzone is not the greatest, um, but it doesn't have as much research. It's supposed to be like a cleaner chemical sunscreen. So um, starting off with that disclaimer, if you have a suggestion, please send it my way. The other thing that I want to add to my capsule collection that is kind of in the category of prep is my hand sanitizer. I always apply hand sanitizer if I haven't just come from the washroom and washed my hands. Uh, let's say I've grabbed my cup of coffee and I just wanna wash my hands before touching my face. I use my fingers a lot for makeup application because I am constantly using cream products and I find that it does a really good job of blending in when I pat with my finger. And so um, hand sanitizing is my favorite thing to do. Super necessary, the palm hand sanitizer is outstanding. I love the packaging. It's very aesthetically pleasing um, and it's also super hydrating and effective and clean. So this is going into my collection as well as these first base products. So the next category is going to be the base for the coverage. So we are looking at foundations, concealers, etc. So of course I have to include my favorite favorite foundation of all time, which is the Westman Atelier um, Vital Skin Foundation. For the winter time, I'm definitely more on the Atelier one. However, if I do have a tiny bit of a self tan, which I get from the Luna Bronze Face Serum, um, then I will swap into Atelier two, which has now been basically scooped out. I've scooped out all the product. So I am planning on replenishing this. And Gucci Westman also definitely recommends that oftentimes to not have a flat base or skin tone is not usually all uniform. Um, it's a more natural effect to use two different shades. So I really like that philosophy. So I will be um, also purchasing Atelier 2 just to kind of add that dimension if I'm not feeling the uh, contour, for example, or a bronzer that will also 
add warmth and dimension to my skin tone. So these two I absolutely love. Most days I would say if I am applying foundation and I'm just in a hurry, I don't want to add a lot of coverage, I will go in with my concealer. And my current favorite concealer is the Air Perez Arnica Concealer in the shade Honey, which is um, very well loved. Such a, such a good concealer. I use it, um, I just used it this morning, so this brush is dirty. But the Westman Atelier Foundation Brush is amazing. It doesn't leave a lot of streaks. Sometimes it does, depending on... Um, if it's dirty, it tends to leave a little bit more streaks because the product is clumping the bristles together. Um, and I'll just go in with my finger or a sponge or the Merit Beauty, another very dirty um, brush, just to buff out any of those fine lines. This is perfect. I'm actually just wearing my concealer today just under my eyes, over my eyelids, kind of around my nose and my um, chin area that tends to get a little bit more red. My, thankfully, my dermatitis has been much more controlled and surprisingly the secret has just been use less products on my face, especially when it comes to skincare. Less is more philosophy for any type of inflammatory condition um, I have found for my skin. So this combo is amazing. But now when we start adding the additional products um, for color and dimension, like contour, um, blush, etc., I will walk into that. So. I love the Westman Atelier Contour Stick. This is my ride or die. I pretty much wear this every time that I do wear foundation. It just gives me such beautiful color and uh, dimension. I will actually more often times than not use this over a bronzer um, because it not only adds a touch of warmth, um, but it does a really nice job at sculpting. So I apply it to my cheekbones, around my forehead, my nose, and then my jawline, and it just really helps to sculpt. I use this brush, which is an angled flat brush. It's kind of similar to the Westman Atelier Blender brush, which is en route to me. I finally caved. Um, but it has that angle, so I take the angled point and I start blending, and then I blend up, and it's great. So this is like an everyday for me bronzer there are two bronzers that i've uh, kept in my collection um i got rid of a lot of bronzers and i love bronzers but the two that i have are my well people bio based baked bronzer and natural tan which definitely has more of a shimmery sheen to it and then the other bronzer that i have is the westman atelier coupe du soleil which is a um warm matte bronzer there's no shimmer no sheen in this at all um i have been using this a little bit more but i do find it works better when i have a bit of a base tan because it is on the warmer side um in terms of like the the tint to it's a little bit more orange whereas the well people is a smidgen more red and so I do find that this looks more natural even when I'm fairer. Well, this looks um, best when I'm a bit tan. You don't notice that orangey tint as much. So for my winter um, capsule wardrobe, capsule, capsule wardrobe, capsule makeup collection, I will be including the Well People. Um, this is not a product I use every single day. I actually rarely use it. As I said, I'm much more prone to wear the contour stick as like my two-in-one bronzer. What I've been doing to add warmth and color to my skin, especially in the fall and winter, is I use the Westman Atelier Peau de Peche, or I should say Super Loaded Tinted Highlight in the shade Peau de Peche, which is this gorgeous peachy kind of rose gold sheen. And this adds warmth to my skin the same way that a bronzer would add warmth um, but it gives you a bit more of a rosiness it definitely gives you that like après ski vibe that I absolutely love so um, this has been a favorite all season long but it definitely gives me that snow bunny um, after the chalet like it's just the most my most prized possession in my collection is this and I definitely recommend out of all Westman Atelier products 
this is the first thing you should buy if you aren't much of a foundation person. It just looks so good. And I have a full video reviewing and chatting about um, this product along with the two other shades in a video I'll link down below. You guys should check that out. If you're on the fence about ordering uh, the Super Loaded Tinted Highlight or you're unsure about how to use it, I have a full video on that. So this is definitely going in my collection for obvious reasons. Starting off with my Ride or Die um, favorite blush that I literally never it does no wrong is the Westman Atelier Petal, which is a beautiful pinky. It has kind of that nudey, mauvey undertone. It's very neutral, maybe a touch cool, and it always looks really good on my complexion. So this is go definitely going in there. Now I'm going to force myself to include probably two other blushes that I may not gravitate towards on an everyday basis. The first one, which I'm actually wearing today, is the Merit Beauty Raspberry Beret. It's definitely more of a deeper raspberry plummy tone, and it is really gorgeous um, for the winter time. Kind of more of those berry tones. I like integrating into the fall and winter, so this will also be added to my collection. And then I'm stuck between two different blushes, another cream one and then a powder one. The one that I'm on the fence about adding is the RMS Beauty. This is the um, Lost Angel. I mentioned in my last video that it is meant to be a dupe of the NARS Orgasm blush, which I used to wear when I wore conventional makeup all the time in the summer, the holidays. It gave me that beautiful glowy cheek but I also find that the Westman Atelier um, Peau de Peche gives me that glowy cheek as well. Um, and then the other one that I've narrowed down to to include in my collection is another blush that I don't reach for often is the OG Rose Quartz. Um, which is more of like a watermelon color. I think actually this is going to be better suited for the summertime. So swatching it helps. You kind of see your color palette and you can kind of guess whether or not you need to add variety in there, which I think I might have to do. So let's try Mimi, which was last year's blush. So there's Petal and there's Mimi. Definitely has more of a kind of nude rose to it. And this Petal's pulling more pink. There are, those are my three blushes. We have the two from Westman Atelier, we have Petal and um, Mimi, and then I have the one from Merit Beauty, which is the Raspberry Beret. Now the other one from Westman Atelier that I'm interested to try is Bichette, which is like a little bit more of a, um, almost like a bricky warm tone, which I think would look really good in the um, winter time. I think it's an all season, but I'm interested in definitely adding that to my collection. And I think that that might replace Mimi for my capsule collection. For highlighters, I have a couple different highlighters. We have Westman Atelier Nectar, which is more of a very fair, kind of peachy, glossy highlight. Lit, which is the original Westman Atelier which is definitely um, more cool. It kind of has an iridescent purpley blue undertone. It's really hard to see because they are more of a balm texture that adds like a little bit of wetness to the skin. I'm wearing um, OG's Opal today, which I think I'm definitely going to add. It's a white, snowy kind of white Again, very difficult to see, um, but I am wearing that today and it just adds a nice gloss to the skin. So um, I find this right in the middle between um, like a champagne and the lit up, which is definitely more cool. It's just kind of that neutral white. So this is going in my collection. My other favorite one that I will be adding, which is more of a soft pink highlight is the Lila B Glisten and Glow and Be Enchanting. This is a beautiful formulation that's somewhat cream, somewhat um, powdery, and I love it every time I put on my skin. Now I know I said that I would be keeping the highlights to a minimum, but I have this one product from the brand Say, 
which is their Dew Bomb. And I think this is one of their like um, best sellers. So I'm just going to see what this looks like. The one thing I'm going to say is it is in a squeeze tube, which can get a little bit messy. I find that when things are in a stick form, they're just super easy for quick application. Um, this has a very, it's similar in terms of the iridescence that the lit stick has, but it's way more pink. It's not really pulling up, but it has a huge pink hue. So I think that that being said, I might actually destash this. I find the consistency really hard to squeeze out and the color is a little bit too pink for my liking. That was easy. Good job. Um, of course, to set my makeup, I don't do this every day, but when I do, the Ilia Translucent Setting Powder will be added to the collection. So we have our foundation, our concealer, our setting powder, our prep, our um, blush, bronzer. So I think that leaves me with brows, eyes, and lips. I want to start off by saying that today I wore the Rouge Paris um, mascara, or Le Mascara, and it started to smudge. So I actually wiped it off, but I had some smudging here, and I had some right in this waterline here. I wore it for maybe, I put it on around 8.30, and I got home around 1 o'clock. So not even half like half a day if that and it was already smudged it wasn't raining i wasn't sweating it wasn't humid it just smudged on its own so unfortunately this is a no bueno for me um i also wore the shoot did i wear this yesterday and it smudged i might have worn this yesterday as well and i noticed my eye mascara was smudged um, the say I cannot remember if it was much so I am going to not add it to my capsule collection because it is not necessarily my favorite but I am going to do a mental note to um, try this out and just see whether or not um, it should be de-stashed or not. Now the favorite mascara of mine that I currently cannot see in my collection is the Ilia Limitless Lash Mascara. It is chef's kiss, it's my favorite, it does not smudge, it stays all day, it lengthens, it separates, it's unbelievable. Oh, I see it, it's right here. So this will be added. I am almost always like 100% sati satisfied with my lashes when I curl them. I find that they look, my eyes look more awake, my lashes look more defined and curled and uh, just definitely adding a lash curler. It makes all of the difference when it comes to the look of my lashes. For eyes, I have been liking a wing more than I thought I would. So the um, Rouge Paris Liliner, it's how it's uh, spelt, is a really good um, felt tip pen to doing a winged liner and I've been really liking the way my eyes look. I don't do it every single day but when I want kind of that cat effect this is beautiful um, and the packaging is gorgeous. So that's being added to my collection um, and then the other product that I like for eyes is when I'm a little bit more lazy and I want just a little bit of definition is a cold pencil. Now I'm going to be adding the Alima Pure uh, Patina, which is a kind of soft brown. Um, but I also, I'm actually waiting for the La Bouche Rouge um, eyeliner, coal liner in just like noir, like just black to come in because I'm, I want to play around with like a little bit of smudged brown in my upper lash line. So that is on route and that will be something that I will be adding to my capsule collection. So I have a soft brown coal pencil, a liquid liner, and then the black uh, coal pencil. Eyes. Now for brows, like I mentioned, my favorite this is just about finished, is the Merit Beauty Brow Gel in the shade Blonde. It's the perfect blonde, I absolutely love it. I also have the Milk, this is their Kush Fiber Brow in the shade MJ, which I think is their blonde. This is far too warm of a blonde for me. This is the perfect neutral blonde. I'm not, I'm not ashy, I'm not warm, my hair is very, uh, neutral. Sometimes it pulls warm or ashy on the camera, but in person it is very neutral. Um, so I will be replenishing this Merit one, which is basically dried out. 
But the other thing that I have literally love with my brows is a soap brow. This is just a plain old glycerin um, soap bar that I picked up from either Loblaws or Whole Foods, just like whatever grocery store. So this is um, a combination I've done soap brows and then I've also added a little bit of the plume uh, brow pomade for a bit of a bolder just to fill in the gaps and this combination is beautiful. I love it when I'm have a little bit more time but if I am really really like in a rush and I just want to add a little bit more definition I'll use the Merit Beauty one. Alrighty, I actually just applied this lip color because I wanted to see what it looked like on my lips. This is the Rouge Barry in the shade, um, oh it's Le Stilo in Alex. And I love it. I love these little um, pen or pencil applicators. I find them super easy. You don't have to be super precise. You don't need a lip brush. Um, and it's a really nice neutral pinkish mauvey rose. Um, no fuss. I really like this. Tossing that in. Um, the other one that I love adding for the holidays is a red lip. And I remember in my last stashing, I was like, oh, this is such a beautiful red. Well, first off, true red is a really beautiful red. It's like a deep kind of um, cool tone red. Very beautiful. And then the other red that I really liked is more of like a fiery red. And it is called... Flame, I believe. Yes, flame. And I'll just swatch it next to it. So those are the two reds. They're super vibrant. Both absolutely stunning. Um, so I think I'm going to go in with flame, which is this very hot red, orangey red, which I think is kind of fun. And then along with a red palette, I'm going in with the Westman Atelier um, Les Rouges palette, which has a bit of a you can kind of see a deep red and a more tomato red is what they call it, a mauve and then a kind of a hot pink. So this is really good because you can just add it as a soft padding on your lip for a stain. You can take a lip brush and make it super defined and super opaque. So it's very versatile and I really do like um, the shade range and I like that I can have with one product a few different um, shades for whatever occasion I am looking for. So I will be also including a lip brush but definitely the French way would be to um, just blot it on your lips and really blend that in so it looks super natural just like a stain. And then if I'm choosing to add a little bit of gloss I have one gloss in particular that has always been my favorite and I love the way that it looks. It is the um, Lawless Forget the Filler. It is plumping. It kind of fills the fine lines and it definitely gives me a um, plumper looking lip. It's not tacky. It's a little bit on the thick side. It's not super, super um, thin in consistency, which might bother some people, especially if you are um, having to put a mask right on top of this. It's not, it's not pleasant. You'll see it has a bit of a minty, um, kind of very faint tingle but I like like the tingle I like the burn because I feel like it's helping to plump my lips it's not a burn it's just a very kind of minty tingle and trust me I've used burning lip products before to plump my lips and this is not anywhere near that intensity eyeshadow so eyeshadow for the winter time the iPods by Westman Atelier I know are not wildly liked because they're a little bit sheer but you can build them up in intensity and you have to unfortunately use the right brush and I find that the Westman Atelier eyeshadow brushes to be the most effective because they were specifically designed for these products but the color chocolate is like my all-time favorite um, kind of very faint smoky I literally just like took the um, number two brush and it's super easy because it's nice and big and I just like fluff that all into my eye ba -ba -ba, in the crease on the eyelid and it gives you like this just nice wash of color so this is being added to my collection the other one that I love is Vin Rouge which is uh, red wine it is similar in terms of like that sheen um, more of a reddish tinge looks gorgeous. I haven't worn it since um, the winter time because it definitely is more of that winter shade but this is being added. The other one I'll use that I really like 
for every day is the Chantecaille Mermaid Eye Matte in the shade Sylvie. It's like the perfect crease tone um, just to set the base for your eye or if you want to wear it alone. It gives you the effect of kind of like a bronzer on your eyelid. So this is being added to the collection as well. Oh, to set it all, I will be including the Glam Guard. It's a very nice fine, fine mist to help just set my makeup. Need a replacement for the Lila B in the interim until I maybe get gifted it for Christmas or I purchase it myself. I haven't quite decided what the plan will be. If you would like a video specifically for the um, makeup brushes or tools that I will be including into my everyday makeup. The pro I have a lot of brushes, but there are definitely a little select few that I wear exclusively or that I use exclusively every single day. So I'd be happy to do a separate video on that, but the video will just be too long if I integrate everything in here together. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. If you have any specific requests, if you have any questions regarding the capsule collection, um, then please let me know. Okay, bye guys.